Hi, welcome back. Um, so in this lesson, we're going to build on the previous uh, agent painter example, uh, except we're going to experiment with the idea of drawing our agents using uh, images and sprites instead of primitives. Um, and in that way, kind of drawing some inspiration from artists like Joshua Davis, uh, who create their composition through a mix of you know randomly generated elements, but also hand-drawn elements. So let's see what that would look like. So uh, I've remixed a version of our sketch here, and let me rename it to Agent, um, let's call it Sprites, because right, we're going to call these, uh, these images uh, Sprites. And what we'll do is we're going to upload some images to our sketch here. So I've already uh, went ahead and found some images we could use, but you could use anything for this. Um, these are just... Uh, images uh, with a transparent background of kind of like different flowers and leaves. I thought that was kind of nice. I found them on uh, some free, you know, vector drawing uh, website. I'll put a link, link down in the description. Um, or you could draw them yourself, of course, but I'm really not very good at, uh, at drawing. So we're going to upload some files here. I uh, don't want to add this file. Upload a file. And we'll go to our desktop. Uh, I have them in this sprites folder. So fortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to upload them one at a time. Uh, so I'm going to do this now. And uh, so this is adding some assets. So now I have two different file assets. And uh, to save you the trouble, um, I'm just going to cut and edit to when I'm done uploading these. OK, so I've uploaded um, all of my files. I have nine of them. and uh, just to remind you, once you upload a file as an asset on Glitch, um, you can't just refer to it by its file name uh, because it doesn't actually live in the same folder as your uh, sketch. Instead, you have to refer to it by this URL. This is where it's being uh, hosted. So I'm going to copy the URL for this uh, file, and we're going to go into our sketch and start building an array called assets. And this array is going to contain all those strings that we're going to grab from uh, from the assets folder. So this is my first asset. Uh, so I'm going to go and collect the others, and then I'll see you in a second. All right, so that was a little bit tedious, uh, but I went in and copy pasted um, all the uh, eight, turns out I have eight, not nine, um, I eight asset URLs here for all my different images I've added to my uh, asset folder. Um, so having done that, then we're going to create an array called sprites, and that's going to contain uh, the actual image uh, objects. So we're, we have all the file names in this array, so now we're going to go and populate this sprites array with the actual images. And uh, when dealing with images in P5, we want to do this in the preload section. So we're going to go through um, all the asset strings in the array assets and then we're going to load the image that's represented by this file right up here by the string and then we are going to push the image at the end of the uh, sprites array so we're going to save the image objects uh, and we're doing that once in the beginning so we don't have to uh, let's format the file doing this once in the beginning so we don't have to constantly be loading these images. We just want to load them once before the sketch start and then uh, be able to reuse them from the sprites array. All right, so uh, let's take a look at our create agent function. So just like we've been able to assign a color to agents, um, we can also assign them an image, right? So every time we want to add more detail to our agents, we just add one more variable uh, to the new agent um, object that we're creating here. So selecting a random image is as simple as picking a random image object out of our sprites array. So now we've associated with this particular agent a random sprite along with all these other uh, values. So now we could say go into render agent and then um, we're going to use image mode center. We don't really need rectangle mode anymore, but I'm going to leave it there anyways. Um, and then instead of drawing a line, I'm just commenting these out in case we change our mind later on. Uh, we're going to draw an image at the image at the agent's position. We're going to use agent.sprite 
and that image is going at zero zero. And uh, that's what we get. Now, this is a pretty crazy mess here because we have a lot of agents. Um, but that can be an interesting thing to think about when creating these compositions. Um, it doesn't have to just be circles and dots and lines. Um, you can use those generative ideas to bring um, you know, illustrated images to life by combining the systems underneath. Those are being generated by our programs and then the actual visuals um, they can be pre-created assets, and then we're just kind of creating more like a collage. Uh, so let's see, this is probably like way too many, um, 125. Let's create fewer agents. Um, they're pretty twitchy as well, right? They do a lot of crazy rotation. Uh, so we could slow that down. And if we don't redraw, if we don't erase the background, this is what that looks like. Uh, now we could also play around with, uh, let's put a few more in there, you know, and there might be, now this is looking pretty messy, obviously, but there might be times where we have some interesting composition, like let's say we don't, um, don't erase the background, eventually they're going to settle into a less uh, spinny behavior here, um, and then we can pause the sketch where they're not spinning, and then we can have some, you know, kind of randomly, you know, we can explore that space until we find an image that we find interesting um, just by chance or by coincidence. Uh, so we get these images, right? We can also uh, put some color in there. This is just black and white. Um, because our sprites are black and white, we can use the, uh, the tint function when we're drawing. So before we draw an image, uh, there's a command called tint, and we can say agent.color. And what tint does is it uh, it sets a color for um, the images that we're about to draw. It is a little bit slow, so that's why after I called tint, um, things are much slower now. Uh, but basically now we have our randomly generated image assets, and then I'm also um, coloring them using the uh, the color palette that we had in the previous example. And uh, yeah, we can let this sketch unfold. We can choose to have the background or not, right? We get a totally different effect if we erase the background or not. If we don't, um, it's kind of nice how these these uh, sprites are leaving trails behind them, so it really fills the the space. Uh, or you know, it's a, we can think of it as just this sort of like random or pseudo random arrangement of uh, of objects just based on our. Uh, our little swarm simulation here, or again, it could be any other system, like some of the ones we've looked at previously in other weeks. Um, the idea here was just to show you quickly a way that you could expand your thinking around you know, what you could use for, uh, for rendering these systems uh, and for generating images. Um, so now this is like an, an infinite source of images based on, uh, you know, infinite source of compositions uh, based on a, a collage of these, uh, these these assets that we've brought in. And depending on what the assets are, you can imagine how we can create some pretty wildly different, um, different results. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Um, I'm going to see you in a, a final lesson for this week, uh, just a little bonus lesson where we're going to explore uh, the idea of uh, symmetry and how we could... Uh, how we could create some interesting mirroring effects uh, by drawing our composition to an, an off-screen canvas and then mirroring that canvas. Um, so I will see you in that lesson for that.